everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And today we are putting on our mystery caps. It's going to be very fun. We are talking about the holiday mysteries that were on Ion Channel this season, this holiday season. There's four of them. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Amber Nielsen is here. Hello, everybody. Yay. Look at this. OG back in the house. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Merry Christmas to you. And how, how are you doing? Have you had a good holiday season? Yeah, it's been great. Just, you know, living it up, <laughs> Good. working up a storm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's it. Well, and we've had a lot of snow here this year. So it's really been filling holiday. Yes, in Utah. really. A very white Christmas indeed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I don't know why I particularly thought of you for doing these ion, but they just because last year they did a movie called the christmas thief which i mm -hmm. thought was really funny and and they'll, and it had a very small budget you could tell but i really enjoyed it i thought it was kind of a clever little mystery and uh and it made me laugh and i and i remember thinking even at the time like i bet amber would like this and, uh, and so then this year when they were like we're leaning into that hard i was like let's do it <laughs> So yeah, and I find enough to agree. To, to be fair, I really love the vibe of the like old school Hallmark movies, right? Like mm -hmm. Mar Vista is my bread and butter, and these weren't yeah. Mar Vista; they were hybrid productions. But they they had that same kind of like vibe and quality, mm -hmm. and I was I was there for that yes. vibe and that quality. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed all four of these movies. I thought that they were all a hoot. I had a good time watching every single one of them. They don't, I mean, they take themselves seriously, but they don't like take themselves too seriously. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not no, all trying, they're not trying to make us cry no. or something. They're like, let's have a good time, you guys. Yeah, no, I, I, there's definitely a wink and a smile. And I mean, it, it definitely, these feel like, the kind of mysteries that you would have gotten on like a uh, emergency road or something like that you know that's just there's like a little wink and a nod you know kind of a thing like they're not trying to be nypd blue or something you know like this gritty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> detective story <laughs> so yeah i agree we interviewed last year we interviewed jared massey who was in a christmas thief so i'll put a link down if people want to check that out but, uh, but yeah, it was, it, it was a fun movie. And so I, I, I'm kind of glad, and it, it's just fun to see them find kind of a niche that nobody else is really doing. And, uh, and in my opinion, do it pretty well. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And, uh, and there, there was one other mystery this season. I mean, there were probably others, but, uh, on HBO max, there was one called a Christmas mystery. That was that we talked about when we talked about the HBO Max movies, and it, it was from like a kid's perspective, kind of like Harry the Spy type gotcha. the mystery. It was so fun; I really enjoyed it. So, uh, if people are are Jones and for even more mysteries after these, I I highly recommend. And I think it. I said it in the recap that I think it's a movie that anybody in a family will enjoy. Enjoy like it has teenage characters, has kid characters, has adult characters. It's just fun. <laughs> So, and there's the, it's the mystery of the Christmas bells that get stolen. <laughs> yes. No, how can you steal bells? They make noise. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so in your opinion, what do you think makes for a, a good cozy mystery or this kind of mystery type movie? What do you think? Well, I think for me, the less twists, the better. Okay. So, frankly, the case of the Christmas diamond, I was like, too many twists. It got a little twisty <laughs> for you. <laughs> and not like it's hard to follow. It's just like at a certain point, I'm like, let's just move on. Like, mm -hmm. we, we know. We know. We already know who it is. Stop trying to fake us out. Right. <laughs> That's fair. That's true. I mean, I, I I thought, oh, this one was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And then I did, I think, enjoy... My least favorite one was the uh, was the Secret Santa one. Unbelievable! That was my favorite one. No, <laughs> it just got a little boring for me in all the research. Oh, I loved it. 
<laughs> See, for me, it felt very much like persuasion, not persuasion, um, possession, or like another film, I can't remember what it's called, where somebody like finds an old letter and then like in the research, they find it. The, well, that's the, like, very, very uh, um, sign sealed delivered Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. But like where they like, the two people like solve the mystery together and they fall in love legitimately when they brought in the treasure hunting guy I was like no don't add another (laughs) element let's just stay here with them falling in love and solving the mystery (laughs) that's true Uh, I don't need a treasure hunter (laughs) well let's dive in to the first one the case of the christmas diamond okay this was on the 20th and it stars kelly daly and has billy baldwin in which he was very it was barely in it but you know that's fine but uh but it's blue collar andy is a little nervous but thrilled when she is invited to her rich friend's estate for christmas but when the family matriarch's multi-million dollar gem suddenly goes missing, she finds herself accused of the theft and at the center of Detective Billings' investigation. With the help of a famous mystery writer, Andy must find the real culprit amid the litany of wealthy guests, all of whom have their knives out for her. I mean, they were really leaning on the uh, knives out. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, they were. <laughs> I mean, and I have to say, I kind of famously, I don't know, I really did not like this newest uh, Knives Out movie. The I haven't onion. watched it yet, so I don't thought it was, spoil it for me. I won't spoil it, but I thought it was terrible. But I'm in the vast minority. Most people seem to really enjoy it. So what do I know? Uh, but but they, uh, uh, they definitely were leaning on. I mean, it's very similar to the first Knives Out as far as like in one house and, you know, got this eclectic rich family and and uh and so it was that's a setup that i think is pretty effective and works pretty well i mean you got to include to you know with like this house and mm-hmm, these various mm-hmm. and you got to go from one to one to one to one to one to see who could be and uh and so i think that's a, a pretty solid way to set up your mystery movie yeah i mean it it also i mean from a production standpoint doesn't hurt the budget to only yeah. have to have one location yeah, absolutely. And and I, I've been saying I these kind of movies feel a little covety to me because you know that, that you know was a big appeal at that time to shoot it all in one place and not have mm-hmm, crouch scenes mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um and this was directed by Peter Sullivan, who we did interview this um season. He's you know done so many of these movies, um, amazing. And uh and uh, so he talked a little bit about it and he was also a part of the writing. So uh, yeah, and I believe he helped produce like every single one of these movies Mm. we're going to be talking about today so yeah so uh, overall i mean you said this was your least favorite but what'd you think overall um i don't know that it was my least favorite it's just i liked the mystery the least does that make Mm, sense yes because i don't have to necessarily love the mystery to enjoy the show Mm -hmm. um i really i was just always hoping are we is this like a full spoiler podcast yeah yeah it's a recap so okay Full yeah. spoilers. Yeah. You want to solve the mysteries yourself? Watch, watch the movie. movie. That's right. <laughs> um, I was really hoping that it was going to be Olivia, the friend, had stolen the necklace. And that had she had invited Andy here as a way to blame Andy. Like, I thought that would have been like a real twist. You know? Like a yeah. real twist. I could have seen that. Um. Uh- and I could have also seen Jackie being the this thief because she, I don't know, I thought that would have been kind of a fun twist because she's the mystery novel writer. Yeah, so the, the, the to... reason why I wouldn't have liked it being Jackie is because Jackie wouldn't have known that this Andy girl was coming, you know, and like yeah. it was a plan. That's true. That's true. It just would have been kind of fun because again because she writes the 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 that the novelist is the one who tricks everybody you know it's because she has that experience but they had a lot of red herrings in this one uh that you had the chef who was a red herring for a while Raphael, i think yes his name and uh and then you had amelia as a as a red herring who was the ex of liam 
Yes. <laughs> and you know, okay, I'm going to say this. Liam is like a good looking guy, but his yeah. hairstyle in this movie was not for me. Okay. And like looking at his IMDb, I was like, why didn't they let him just have the other hairstyle? Like, this is not for me. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm not alone in this. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little, it was, <laughs> I could see that. The one that was confusing is I didn't really understand why she put the, the German figurine in her pocket. It didn't yeah. Really, no, did it didn't do make that? It, because the script told her to. Right. Um, <laughs> but it didn't make any sense. I was like, what are you doing? You're going to. Well, like- okay. And to be fair to this, a lot of this movie was like, but why are they doing this? Like what authority by what authority are they letting themselves be interviewed by these two ladies anyway Mm -hmm. it's true they did kind of take over i mean i was like if you have billy baldwin in this role like they must have only had him for like two days because like why wouldn't you have him do it and also by by what authority is that woman keeping anyone there right that's true like he would come in sporadically to be like oh well you can't leave (laughs) but then he wouldn't be doing the interviewing (laughs) it was it was fine like and I enjoyed I enjoyed when she was like haha see I couldn't have used this elevator because the power was out which fair that was fun but a lot of it just seemed like um, it felt like they were trying to fill two hours when it was an hour long storyline and did you think that Raphael the chef was a convincing red herring Uh, I mean it was kind of funny that they continued to like go on with their Christmas festivities throughout this whole thing like when they sit down for uh for their for the ham dinner and all this stuff I'm like that's the thing there there was a lot of stuff that was like but why are they doing this I mean I guess in defense of them I don't know anybody who's like insanely obscenely wealthy so maybe that's how they act that's a a real response for them Mm -hmm. but like no the Raphael thing no I wasn't because he had to borrow he had access to money and he took 30k from it yeah but he put it back allegedly and he was using it for the business she'd already invested in or something so like whatever he's still a thief i think yeah she owed him he did owe her money though so that was supposedly his motivation well and then but he claims that when he went in there he put the money back plus interest that's what he said Mm -hmm. so like i don't know yeah so then you also have Harper, who's like the young college student, and she's been taking the money they've been sending her for college and uh, planning to go to Europe with her uh, boyfriend, Cedric. Yeah. And Cedric is like middle class. He's like not up to their standards. It was so... Her story, she gave me nothing. No, like... The actress did a fine job. I yeah. was just like, she, the character was so one note. Like I wanted more from Harper. Like yeah. her, her entire thing was like, oh, I'm an influencer. I need to be on my phone. But like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel anything more from her from that. And I wanted more. But, mm-hmm. but yeah you know we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast calling all pride and prejudice fans lizzie shane the award-winning author of the pine hollow series has a brand new small town romance on the shelves and this time it has a jane austen twist in pride and puppies a jane austen fan struggling to find her modern day mr darcy decides to swear off men and adopt an adorable puppy only to find herself catching feelings for her sweet, not at all Darcius neighbor. Lizzie Shane's Pine Hollow series has been called an irresistible blend of heart, humor, and a whole lot of puppy love. Don't miss Pride and Puppies available now wherever books are sold. 
To learn more, visit www.lizzieshane.com or use our affiliate link in the description. That's lizzieshane.com. So Amelia is was engaged to Liam. Were they, right. uh, they were they fully engaged or just like boyfriend and girlfriend? I've written down engaged, but I'm not sure. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of clues and keeping making sure I'm not getting these four movies confused is a little bit hard because <laughs> they were all somewhat similar. Uh, but um, they have this set. So Margaret, the mom, sets up this whole game that whoever wins the game will get the Christmas diamond. It's called Windfall, <laughs> the game, <laughs> and to show, uh, and so they they make it so that Andy has to pick a winner. Uh, and and uh, Margaret says, none of you deserves my diamond. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, what was the point of it? Like, I mean, the point of it was just to make Margaret become less likable and to set up that there's a diamond and why everyone wants them, mm-hmm. like everyone's motivations. I understand from a narrative point why this happened. Right. I don't understand from a human being point why Margaret would do this at all. Yeah, it seems hard to believe that she wouldn't have somebody who deserves her diamond, but or just keep it herself. Why? Like why, why bring it up at all? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then we also get in this scene the uh, they fire Bridget, the the maid, uh, because she spills Butler. on, uh, or Butler, she spills on. Uh, I forget that lady's name. Leonora. Leonora. She spills on her the eggnog eggnog teeny. <laughs> Which I think if you were going to be drinking a cocktail, that would not be your cocktail choice, correct? I An mean, eggnog teeny. Me? I don't like yeah. eggnog. That's I don't what like I'm saying. No. no. <laughs> um and uh anyway, but that that's supposed to be set up as kind of like, wow, that was a harsh, harsh reaction from margaret to bridget so that's kind of setting her up as a possible red herring uh plus they find her later uh looking kind of suspect yeah. hiding what do you think of bridget did you think she had motivation i mean as like to steal the diamond mm-hmm. sure but like no i mean this is the thing about this whole, the whole thing about stealing a diamond like this like you can't just like steal the diamond and be like boom now i'm wealthy like that and especially when there are so few suspects yeah well yeah especially approximately one ounce of police work to find it so what's the point of even stealing it yeah it's true and that is very true because you couldn't sell it because uh everybody would know uh i mean like and even if you did manage to get it you know to fence it off and get money like all it would take is just like the smallest amount of a subpoena for them to subpoena bank records and to see yeah. that you've had this that's windfall true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true um, it I was a it terrible was... plan but like yeah whatever i forget who said it but i did like the line truly successful people don't keep reminding them how successful they are it was olivia it was olivia okay <laughs> uh and and then we have they find the necklace in Andy's suitcase. So then all of a sudden she's the suspect. Of course, we know that she's not really. I mean, that would be that would be a twist. Yeah. And like if anyone had a half of a mind in that house, they would be like, well, obviously she didn't steal it because she's the one who suggested that they search all the rooms. She's right. Not gonna suggest that and then hide it in her own suitcase. Dumb. Mm-hmm. Stupid. Yes, and we'd get some flirting between Liam and Andy, and we even get a kiss under the mistletoe. A real and, one, not a real one at first. Is it they a just, near they kiss? They just do a kiss the cheek. Oh, okay. okay. But um, but Amelia is furious. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I guess for me, like after watching over a hundred Christmas movies, this was just like something different. It was fun. And I, this was the first one I watched, so uh, it it I watched them all on the same day, and uh, it I don't know it was just refreshing. I thought it was I I enjoyed it, and uh, and they find the statue in her sweater, 
And that makes them think even more that she did it, which was, I was like, why did you put it there in the first place? Like, that's such a weird thing to do. Yeah. I don't as we know. Taught, as we said. Like if it, uh, if she had broken it, like if she had been holding it and it dropped and broke and the person was like prowl, the prowler, uh-huh. you know, the prowler. And then she like just stuck it in her pocket really quick to like take downstairs and looked for glue or something you know yeah cool I accept that but like just like just why'd she put it in her pocket she like she wasn't even like on the other side of the room she was literally right in front of the it took more effort to put it in her pocket than it would have to put it back on the shelf yeah uh so then they have these interrogations like you're saying and I did you like they made chocolate cookies for the interrogation I did and I I I enjoyed um Jackie's uh like rationale after the fact where Mm -hmm. she was like if you give people something to like put their mind on when they're guilty they will like the guilty people will be like yeah I'm gonna eat all these cookies so that I can not just entirely focus on the thing that I'm hiding or something I don't know Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly what she said but I was like nice yeah that's a good one uh, so then they start to suspect Liam because uh, they, uh, they, Amelia says she saw Liam outside where there's the, the tracks of the, uh, of the uh, perpetrator. Uh, and, uh, and then, so Margaret gets upset about that. And she says, you mess with my son. And uh, <laughs> yeah. we find out that Liam is a gambler and he owes 150 K. So was that a convincing red hair, a convincing uh, red herring for you? No, no. It wasn't. <laughs> I'm serious. None of the red herrings were convincing. And so I was like, stop doing it. Let's just get to the, the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they've also been, there's these mysterious kind of ransom envelopes appearing all over the place. And, um, uh, and uh, for her and, I, well, I they're not ransom notes. They're like who that's done in the cards. that's in the dog one that has they're, the yeah ransom. the who done it yeah. cards. To yes, like, the cards. Oh, pay attention to the thief. Oh, right, pay attention yeah. To the... They're like um uh, uh they look fortune like teller tarot fortune cards, yeah tarot not. that's the word. They're they're they... the cards from that board game that they were going to play. Oh right. Yeah, except right. for she was like, oh, and look. On the thief card, they're in the. They're a chef, so that's a. And I was like, "Girl, she did not have time. No one had time to design these cards. Like these are just the cards from the thing. That ca- they can't have been like, oh, the thief is the chef, right? So I'm going to design a thief card with a chef <laughs> on it. That didn't happen. That that's a coincidence. Yes. Well, there's a accident on the stairs, <gasps> Margaret. Yes, and. Uh, uh so now everybody's even more upset and billy baldwin is back interviewing everybody you have Raphael hiding uh and so there's nine innocent people and one liar <laughs> yes <laughs> uh and so uh we have amelia she's getting kind of jealous of andy uh and and so that kind of gives her motivation. This is when we have the big feast with the baked ham with pineapple, turkey with fruit stuffing. I'm like, what is that? Fruit stuffing. I, and also ham with pineapple. Like, what are these people eating? <laughs> I mean, I've at least seen that before, but I've never seen fruit stuffing. Uh, and then sh- they have sugar cookie martinis. <laughs> so they're getting pretty sloshed here. I guess. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, then everybody has an envelope with cards. And yes. Th- and this is when uh, Harper announces that she dropped out of college and that she's been sending all the money to Cedric. Uh, we also find out that uh, that Margaret has a secret lover. <laughs> that had a secret lover. Had, had which secret- I was like, oh, oh, it's going to be Detective Billings. No. Oh, that would have been wasn't. good. It wasn't. I was like, well, why is he here? <laughs> like, what? Is... But no. And so she she had the secret lover and it was 
Liam's dad. Yes. So he's not a real whatever this family's name is. Yeah. And uh, and then we find out that Gary is the one. We haven't mentioned him because so Gary is the husband of Leonora, correct? Yeah. And he's yeah. also Margaret's brother. Yes. And uh, and so he's been. Did you did you suspect him? Yeah, you said you suspected him early. No, it was a hundred percent. He did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, and so yes, he is. He is the. Uh, he's he steals the diamond. We also find out that Bridget has been having an affair with Gary. So. Which I was like, why is this necessary? But it's fine. <laughs> Uh, and he set up to for Margaret to have the accident on the stairs and so yeah he's just okay good- and then the like and then with Margaret dead the all of the assets 100% of the assets or whatever will go mm-hmm. to Gary and I was like she has children right they'd go to her children yes so, that was the weirdest trust I've ever seen <laughs> yeah uh, and then and we find out Liam is going to be going to Gamblers Anonymous. He's going to he's going to fix up his life. He asks Andy on a date and then they kiss under the mistletoe. Well, so. you know, good for him to clean up his life, but I don't think that they, he should be getting into a relationship while he's dealing with addiction. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. But uh, but I I just had a a really good time. It, it this made me smile. I thought it was clever and refreshing and something different uh i mean i'd give it like four out of five crowns i i had i enjoyed it what about you what would you give it i mean like three crowns but then two and a half crowns because why was leonora getting arrested at the end (laughs) oh yeah they arrested gary and they arrested leonora and Mm. as far as we know leonora doesn't have like she didn't think any she didn't perpetrate any of the stuff Mm-hmm. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that, but you're right. Yeah, that's true. Well, maybe 3.75, but I had a good time with it. I really did. <laughs> I, just, I was like, <laughs> why are they arresting Leonora right now? Yeah, that makes sense. If they're arresting her on conspiracy charges, I don't think that they would be able to do that, right? I just, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Move on with your life, Amber. <laughs> All right. Then- Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Next, we had Dog Nap Town for the Holidays. And yes. this is on the 27th. So this was Thanksgiving weekend. And it's our Sarah Ball and Noah Fernley. When an egotistical social media influencer's dog is kidnapped overnight, her long-suffering assistant, Emily, teams up with charming local vet, Jonathan, to find the puppy before Christmas. As the two investigate suspects, including a rival influencer and a crazed fan, they form a romantic bond along the way until she suspects her charming vet isn't all he seems to be. So, overall, what do you think of this one? Okay, um this one was fine i have to well i have to say so noah fernley the guy who played the vet jonathan he just gave me so much jc chaze vibes from nsync uh-huh i was like 
it's JC. I couldn't, I couldn't stop myself. And so now I want them to do like a biopic movie about NSYNC where he plays JC. That's all I want. Oh, there um, you go. All I want out of life. Um, I do have to say, I was a little bit miffed when they were like, Jonathan, the kid who used to have huge glasses and was like a huge nerd. And they were like, well, he got biceps and his eyes got better. I was so mad they didn't have him still wearing glasses at least. Like, yeah. Yeah, for Jackson. Yeah. For yeah. Um wasn't that his uh, name? It was named Jackson. Jackson, yeah. His name's Jackson. Well, I wrote that down wrong. <laughs> oh, wait. No, sorry. I got the wrong one. Where is that? Was that search for Secret Santa? Sorry. Um, you're right. It is John. <laughs> well, I wrote that down right. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean it's a the, small thing, but I'm like, glasses are very good looking like glasses are attractive why did he not get to wear glasses well Well, you made that a part of his fundamental character as a child that's true well and we've been talking a lot this season about how hallmark's been embracing the nerd chic because there have been a lot of guys with glasses well it's season it's not like it's unattractive (laughs) no it's very very good but uh, but yeah, so it starts out with this woman, Victoria, who uh, is an influencer, as they say. And who do you think they were trying to kind of, was she supposed to? Well, I don't know that she was. Anyone in specific, you think? I don't know that she was actually an influencer. I mean, she was, I mean, she's, is, but like, she was, she's like one of these like home brand ladies, right? Yeah, like, yeah, that's true. Like, uh. I mean, like not Joanna Gaines, but like Mm. one of these other people. Yeah. Like the pioneer woman. Right. Yeah. So she has all these home furnishings. You're right. Home furnishings. Yeah. And And like, obviously she is, does have like social media influence and that she would probably be like, oh, this is the scarf I wore. And then all the people would be like, I want to be just like this lady who's got all of her life together. I'm going to get this scarf. So then Emily played by Sarah Ball she uh she is her assistant Mm -hmm. but also wants to be a a a designer yeah like a home goods designer yeah yeah and uh so but uh victoria is constantly quote-unquote borrowing her designs and uh and evidently uh the uh emily uh is is willing to put up with this because she thinks that it's going to pay off someday or whatever. But uh, she uh, gets in this position where she needs to get away. Victoria needs to get away for the holidays. And so she ends up going to Emily's hometown Christmas. Yeah. She's trying to avoid the publicity backlash of, you know, Victoria going in and stealing the other lady's designs. (laughs) Like what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so she goes, they go hometown for Christmas. And uh, so when they said, she says, uh, her mom, Emily's mom, I says, being alone and lonely have very little to do with each other. Which I thought was a, a good line. It's true. Very true. Uh, but uh, um, then uh, we meet Jonathan, the vet, uh, and uh, she's trying to get help for Tiny, a little dog, Tiny. And uh, that she sets up this whole supposed pet adoption at the beginning, but she doesn't, doesn't like, doesn't particularly like dogs, Victoria, but Emily yeah. likes dogs. Yeah. And, uh, and so Jonathan, the vet, and she passes out in the vet's office because the needle for the, uh, for the treatment or whatever is so long. <laughs> yeah. For the dog's vaccination. Have you ever passed out? I have. Yeah. But me not too. because of a needle. Yeah, Needles for, don't bother me. For me, uh, it was actually <laughs> my sister had gotten her wisdom teeth taken out. And I I went into the, uh, the office to pick her up. And she was just so like puffy. And there was that smell and everything. And I went out to the car and I passed out on the, <laughs> I woke up and I had gravel on my face. Oh no. I came in and they were all like, Mom. <laughs> and so my cousin Julia had to come pick us up. That's so bad. That's You're funny. a great driver to drive someone home after they yeah. got their wisdom teeth out. Yeah, don't don't plan on me. <laughs> That's so funny. 
Yeah, that's the only time I passed out though in my in my life was then. <laughs> uh, but uh, but then Tiny gets dog napped from the veterinarian yes. clinic, and I don't know why they had that door open, un you know, unlocked with this special dog. But uh, but yeah, regardless of what kind of dog, still, and like I still can't believe that nobody had cameras at this point in their life on their yeah. buildings. Like, even if it's a a safe, like, I have cameras all over my house just because I find it interesting. Like, you tell me that nosy lady next door didn't have a camera already. Yeah, that was a little surprising. She finally gets one. Of course, then we find that out at the end uh, that that ends up being a a thing. But yeah, the nosy neighbor uh, that says the dogs are being too loud and everything. But, uh, um... And then we find out that uh, that this is when we get these ransom cards keep coming. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they they demand a million dollars for Tiny's return. And I'm and, like, sorry, Tiny, <laughs> you are not you're not a million for me, buddy. And we forgot to mention that Vivica Fox is in this. Yes, she is. And so Victoria asks, I think her name was Dee Dee. Mm-hmm. Ask Dee Dee for a loan and of a million dollars, and that's when you go, Victoria. How how important are you if you don't have a million dollars? Right. And like, wh- okay, why is you doing something front page news, but you don't even have a million dollars? Mm-hmm. That was that was a big flaw for me. Yeah, that is immediately somewhat suspect. So we also have some of the red herrings on this one we have the crazed fan that just loves victoria yeah were you suspect of her not the minute that there was a ransom note Mm -hmm. because that's not that's not her she wants to be like her she would never hurt her unless she was rejected by her like that's just that's just not how crazy stalkers work and i was like no yeah she's not the problem (laughs) Then there's also Victoria's security guard, Griffin. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a possible suspect. So then, yeah, there's this whole ransom drop off. And then they chase this kid on a bike and it turns out he just has bagels. And, yeah. uh, and so they paid the ransom, but they don't have the dog. Yeah. And... <laughs> What are you and do? so then Emily thinks that Jonathan has uh, taken the, or the, he thinks that he, she thinks he's a liar and she gets upset with him. Yeah. And that was uh, just, that's just classic last few minutes of the show misunderstanding. Yeah. Keep says, them apart. Cause they almost had a, they had a near kiss. That was like by mom. I'm like, can you stop? <laughs> Like he stood up and then she stood up at the same time and they were like, oh, and I was like, that's not even a time to kiss someone. Why are you doing this right now? <laughs> yeah. You're both just. Laughing. And the mom stops them at one point. She's like, yeah, Sorry. that one, that one <laughs> earned a good one. And also a good reason to not kiss someone. Not like my phone rang, like, oh, someone came in the room. Awkward. We're not doing this right now. Bye. And we, we found out the uh, assistant for Jonathan had sold paparazzi pictures yes uh, i forget his name but anyway bernard yeah. bernard <laughs> bernard was my bro i was like yes bernard is the best <laughs> name keep bernard in every movie he's a terrible vet tech like right. terrible um, but... and then we have the uh um we have uh we find out that victoria's been stealing emily is stealing emily's designs and then they are at the repair shop and uh you get this whole scene with griffin he's like looking for something (laughs) yeah and and then they fight and uh and then victoria holds a gun up on emily and uh and then she knocks him out and they said never underestimate a woman in a heel yep that's fun and then they find tiny 
And <laughs> then our final sort of sequence is this big uh, event or whatever. Where she's launching her fake designs or was it a shirt? What was the, I can't remember what the big event was. It was the Christmas tree decorating contest. The annual oh, contest, right. But she was doing, she was hosting it or like being the judge for like good PR. Victoria was. Yeah. Anyway. And she tries to claim that Emily dognapped tiny. Yeah. Although yeah. she did initially say like, let's just both ignore this. I'll give you a promotion at the company. You can have like a big payday and we don't ever have to find out who the dog napper ever was. And, Vic- and Emily's like, I can <laughs> never. <laughs> and we've got, we've got the video. So they, they show the yeah. video and then you've got Griffin ends up holding them all up. And, uh, and that's when tiny bites him. Cause that's been a thing. Yeah. And they, this they, whole they, thing. Yeah. The, the payoff of tiny biting someone. Oh, I was like, yes, <laughs> ripped it. Right. Yeah, it. That is Chekhov's good. dog bite. Like that is, I am on board. I was yeah. like, I like almost stood up and clapped. I was like, yeah. they don't go with the dog bite. And so then they arrest Victoria and, and that, and then Dee Dee is there and says, Emma will be the new face of the brand. And, uh, and so then Emily and Jonathan make up and they kiss at the end. And, uh, so all's well that ends well. <laughs> no, because I have never been more mad in my life than two <laughs> seconds after I was so happy about that dog, because then Emily is the judge of the Christmas decorating contest, Christmas tree decorating contest. <laughs> she gets up there and goes, I know what to do. Everyone wins. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. For just participation trophy is going there <laughs> i was so mad those people put in effort she didn't even go look at the trees oh, right. <laughs> i was so mad i mean yeah. it's unreasonable for me to be so upset <laughs> but i was like worst judge ever <laughs> uh, so what would you give dog nap town for the holidays good title, uh, I think. honestly i i'd give it like a three it was pretty fun there wasn't like we spent a lot of time like chasing down leads i guess Mm -hmm. i don't know it felt it felt like a lot of the movie was just spent like spinning our wheels and not doing anything so that's why it's like not higher for me but that dog bite paying off was incredible yeah yeah i'd probably give it like a i don't know 3.25 I, I, it leaned into the camp, you know, Victoria was very campy yeah, and you always yeah. can count on Vivek Fox to be campy. And that's fun to me when these, these movies are a little bit campy. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. All right. Next we have the search for secret Santa. This was on the fourth and it stars Sky Kone and Alex Trumbull and it's cub reporter Sophia thinks she's found a Christmas story that will save her career when she discovers a long last long lost undelivered secret Santa gift from Tony to Abigail. But the mystery gets even juicier when she learns that the item, a priceless nutcracker, was in fact stolen years ago. With the help of a handsome and shady art dealer, Jackson, she sets off on a dangerous romantic quest to match the secret Santas and catch the thieves. So you were a fan of this one. You enjoyed this one. Yes. And to be fair, Jackson's not an art dealer. He's an antiques dealer. Oh. Different. <laughs> Though they do probably deal in art as well. Okay. So the things that I loved about this movie everything aside <laughs> from the treasure hunting guy who's yes. like too much of a villain it's unbelievable and not necessarily in the fun way mm-hmm. yeah you well, know? yeah well like because that guy like he saw the the story being reported and he's like oh i gotta find well he allegedly uh, like he was the at the at the in the prequel flashback moment right he was like the other guy in the yes yeah it starts out uh 50 years before that one okay and can i just say when they said 50 years ago and then they show up rocking 1970s clothes i was like oh my gosh we are in 2020s (laughs) like yeah that made my that melted my brain yeah 
he knocks him out with the gun the, the guy there's a guy with a gun and then he knocks him out and uh, he like lives with all of this guilt about what he did even though this guy was going to kill him he had a gun out to him yeah but anyway (laughs) so sophia she's getting a new apartment it's in this apartment that's very like cozy and people are like playing cards and talking and and whatever this yeah it's just like a it's just like a big house that's been converted into individual apartments Mm -hmm. yeah Um, the cutest probably actually a bed and breakfast in real life (laughs) probably and so she is moving out she'd been living with her friend well yeah she her ex brad but then like when she broke up with brad she moved in with her her friends they were a couple and, and i uh, can't remember nancy's lady's name uh let's see i have it somewhere in my notes laura laura nancy and laura and uh so she uh she's she's got her box of brad stuff yeah (laughs) and uh, and she finds out at the beginning that she's now going to be paid per story and not salaried yeah which you know that's not even a terrible thing for jack a to have done to her right p.s jack a being the big name in this movie my favorite one Mm. but i wish we had billy baldwin and vivica fox and then jack a and then also tom arnold right yeah you're right yeah but Jack. Yeah, i mean i everything. really love vivica she, she but she wasn't there were, she wasn't in that much you know most of it was just her in her office talking yeah. um but uh but yeah i i can i i think i probably agree i uh i do wish that somebody in one of these christmas tv movies one of these days would make jack a funny i she's been in so many at this point and they've never not whether it's lifetime or hallmark or Ion, nobody has ever made JK funny. <laughs> they just let her let her be free. I know. <laughs> uh anyway. Um, so that's a change for her. So she has to think of stories. And mm-hmm. so she finds this box, this wrapped gift in the basement that is a secret Santa gift. And so she decides that this could be an interesting story. Yeah, oh, and I yeah. I loved it. I was all in on the like the conceit of the story. Like, oh, cool! Now we're going to investigate finding out who the secret Santa is. And it wasn't something where I was like, "Why are these people getting involved in this?" Like a little bit on that uh, the case of the diamond movie. I was mm-hmm. like, "Why are they investigating this?" Like why is billy baldwin not doing this right yeah that's fair that's fair i so she yeah she just starts looking she finds a note that says mh she figures out it's marcy harris and uh, and then she finds out that marcy harris was a wrapping paper designer Mm -hmm. uh, and this particular design was from 1972 uh and so she starts kind of unraveling that uh that someone is in love with abigail this is just not like a friendly secret santa this is an an important secret santa well it says love that's like that's yeah. kind of a big clue yeah and uh and then the nutcracker is in the box and she says they said that oh that's so romantic and they don't you know the story of the nutcracker and i was kind of confused because the nutcracker is about a little girl like, yeah, there's the prince, but like, I would not ever describe the Nutcracker as being like super romantic. I mean, I honestly don't know enough about the Nutcracker to make <laughs> that statement, but like maybe like not the ballet, but like maybe like the original story or something. Oh, I don't know. I can see that. I guess that's true. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, it's about a little girl. Uh, but uh, But anyway. And they do say the only thing I watch at Christmas is Die Hard. Where do you stand on the Die Hard Christmas movie debate? It's one hundred percent a Christmas movie. I agree. Like the so for me the the qualifications of a Christmas movie is it has to be either like it can't just be like set on Christmas. Like being set on Christmas doesn't qualify it as a Christmas movie for me. Mm-hmm. So like Harry Potter is not a Christmas movie for me just because they have Christmas in Harry Potter doesn't make it a Christmas movie but like 
<sighs> Die Hard, it happens on Christmas. The entirety of the movie takes place on Christmas. And the only reason why the movie takes place on Christmas, like the only reason why the actions happen in that movie is because it's Christmas. He comes to visit his family for Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's a Christmas party. So yeah. that's why they hit the Nakatomi Tower on that day is because everybody else is out of the building except for the people that they need. So it's like limited problems. Christmas, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's set on Christmas and also like it has lots of Christmas music and it's it's a Christmas movie. I agree. Down. I agree. I mean he says ho ho ho. Why not? Yeah, he does. He now I have a machine gun. Ho ho ho. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So then we have that she opens up the box and so she's seen the nutcracker, and then there's a royal stamp on the nutcracker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we find out that this nutcracker is evidently worth big bucks, seven figures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it really, it looked like something you could buy at Michael's, but that's okay. <laughs> well, but not when you consider that the allegedly the diamonds on it are real. Right. <laughs> and that the gold paint is literally gold. So this is when the, we get the mafia guy. In, uh, the <laughs> He's not a mafia guy he's just like he's literally an eye patch wearing villain yeah i i wrote down mafia guy but but yeah he was just like he's a bad guy uh but yeah you're right yeah eye patch on and he is we find out is jackson's boss basically old boss he used old to be boss. His boss when he yeah. was in when he was a crime guy <laughs> um and so then they uh let's see here um they find out about the nutcracker curse yeah. from this lady miss leopold yes. i think was her name and she's like take it away from me <laughs> i don't want anything to do with it uh because it gave no luck to her and her family and this yes, is where we cursed. find we find out about peter and finn mm -hmm. yeah that peter died of a broken heart that they were in love he was the prince peter yeah and uh and so that was an, uh, an interesting part of the story yeah um, and then um yeah so that's so we find out about that and then we also find out that it was given to a ballet company for some mm -hmm. reason yeah and then uh the uh so then jackson and now i've already forgotten her name Sophia. Sophia they're like very flirty and he stays at her house they have a sleepover because, well, because he wants to protect her because when they came home they saw someone using a flashlight in her room mm -hmm. the henchman so like it's yeah. not like they were just like I'm just need to protect you it was like there's <laughs> literally someone just broke into your house right <laughs> Uh, and then uh, and they watch a movie and they have some cute popcorn moments yes. like she reached in and he literally like i like that it wasn't an accident like oh we our hands touched it was him seeing her hand was there and being like yep oops sorry it was such a move i loved it <laughs> that's cute uh so then ernie the apartment guy he gets attacked and uh and then um and there's also this whole chase where this guy grabs her, the guy with the patch grabs her purse, but they have tracking on it and it's the wrong, it's the wrong nutcracker. And so then he gets really mad. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies merch store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. 
That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. Evidently, like they were have Tony stole the nutcracker because they were have and, and then it caused all kinds of problems. And uh, it, the lady Ivana, she says that it's cursed. Mm-hmm. And um, the ballet lady, the leader of the ballet company, yeah, yeah. Once it was stolen. And Tony stole it because he wanted to give it to Abigail so then they could run away together. Mm-hmm. And then I wasn't exactly sure why Abigail's family like moved in the middle of the night, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Got a little confused. Uh, and we find out that that Ernie is actually Tony. Yes. And you get told that you and I have a lot to talk about, Tony. <laughs> and we find out that all the presents on his tree were for Abigail, and there's one for every year they were part. Which is like, oh, the notebook, but for presents, which is a thousand <laughs> times better than the notebook. <laughs> yeah. So he feels like he killed a man the night he stole the nutcracker. Mm -hmm. and uh and so that's where he's living with all this guilt and so then we have the guy with the patch is blackmailing jackson well he's not really blackmailing him he's like what's the word that's not extorting Mm. uh when you i mean it's like duress right like he's like i'm gonna kill your sister if you don't do this right that's not even blackmail that's just like that's true know, you're right under pain yeah, of true. death <laughs> <laughs> yes his sister gets uh abducted yeah and Andrea. Uh, yes um and then uh and yeah we find out simon was his boss that he was a treasure hunter and yeah. uh then uh, we have tony is there the patch guy's there with like this giant knife <laughs> Well, I okay, I can't get over it. Patch guy and his knife. Okay, so they go and they like yada yada yada. They're gonna do an exchange for the nutcracker so he doesn't kill his sister. First of all, why did they bring the real nutcracker? They literally have a guy who's like main specialty is making nutcrackers. Throughout the show, Jackson's like, I made all these nutcrackers. Like, yeah, have him whip together a fake one for this handoff so you don't have to worry about risking something that's worth like 25 million dollars or something they said yeah ridiculous million. and then a freaking eye patch shows up in a world where guns exist and he's like let me just bring this knife what it was really big knife eye patch what are you doing <laughs> yes <laughs> and then they hit them, hit him with the nutcracker, but then he rises up and there's this whole chase through the theater, back and forth, back and forth through all the uh, scaffolding or whatever, and the theater, uh, but the, uh, the sister is okay and they are able to finally catch this treasure hunter guy. And uh, and Nancy and Laura are taking the Nutcracker on the honeymoon for an exhibit on Peter and Finn. So, which hooray! And they also say like, and uh, we're not going to arrest Tony because the uh, Nutcracker was ultimately returned. Uh, blah blah blah. And I was like, okay, I'm at least glad that they mentioned it. Yeah. I don't know why anyone needed to tell them that he was Tony. Let's let him live in secret. Yes, and we find out that Sophia has now gotten a book deal yeah possibly yeah. a movie yeah <laughs> um exciting and abby sh- abigail shows up and they're like in love it's cute mm-hmm. um, yeah it was cute that was cute and uh, and then you see jackson etching sophie and jackson on the beam in the in the basement because there was abigail and tony so and like and- it's it's the cheesiest but you know i liked yeah. it maybe too um, I thought it was so good. <laughs> I have to say, you have you have you, talking with it has made me made me up my score a little bit. I um, know, I I, and like I it. thought they did the leads. I thought the leads uh, were the best actors that we have seen. 
Like they were, I thought they were so good. I believed everything they were giving me and I believed their chemistry so strongly. I was like, yes, 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 I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> Which is, I think the reason why I was so disappointed that eye patch existed. Cause I was like, he's taking away from what could just be like a simple pared down, really great mystery mm-hmm. with people falling in love. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know. It just got when they were like researching the wrapping paper and it, like just the research parts of it were a little slow for me, but, uh, but you make good points. I, I still did enjoy it. Um, you should really watch the movie possession. Is that what it's called? Amber. Possession. It has like Gwyneth Paltrow and Jennifer L and what's that? Oh, what's it called? I don't know. I swear it's called something like that. Yes, it is called Possession. Gwyneth Paltrow, oh. Aaron Eckhart, Jennifer Ellie, and Jeremy Northam. And like these two people, they're both like whatever. They read like different letters from these two people. And like as they are unlocking the mystery of these two old timey people, their love story, Gwyneth Paltrow and Aaron Eckhart also fall in love. Oh, interesting. I haven't heard of that. Um, I probably give this one 3.25. Boo. <laughs> I am giving this movie, honestly, like a 4.3. Uh-huh. And the only reason why it's not higher is because I patch guy was too much. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Last one is called A Prince and the Popper Christmas. And this was on the 11th. And uh stars Brittany Underwood. And it's when her down on his luck confidential informant in a criminal investigation suddenly goes missing, a desperate young federal agent, Sydney, recruits her doppelganger to play his role. But her job gets even harder when she falls for the criminal stand-in who just happens to be a European prince visiting the States for Christmas. (laughs) It's a lot going on there. It's a lot. It's a lot. (laughs) Uh, and it's Jonathan Stoddard who is playing the the prince slash the double role. And this is directed by Peter Sullivan, and uh, and it has Tom Arnold, like you said. I had a I thought this was really fun. I enjoyed this. I liked the back and forth between the two different. Uh, you had the prince who's like kind of excited to be involved with all of this uh, because he usually doesn't get to do anything fun like that. But then you also had Patrick. Uh, who is the uh, who is the confidential informant uh, and a thief he's no good Uh, I was talking with a friend online and they said that they didn't like the ending that they gave for Patrick and I was like that's fair because they do kind of build him up as like oh he's changed guy he's a and so for him to end up being arrested and and uh, and what 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 made Pat not one action did Patrick do made him feel like he was changed what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's what they said. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know <laughs> if it was just that he was just charming. Uh, but yeah, that they that that's what the friend was saying on Twitter. <laughs> Your friend on Twitter. <laughs> Who is it? Uh, I'm gonna have to find it. I'm gonna but... find him. No, <laughs> no, no way, Jose. Patrick, homie, he never did anything that was a redemption arc. Mm -hmm. he stayed he stayed static which was actually nice because it created a good foil to alexander who actually was changing and growing and not only like i'm just i think it was intentional i think it was a well done non-arc for patrick yeah you make a good point uh so we find out that yes (laughs) i know i'm queen of points (laughs) patrick is the stealing he says stealing treasure is my specialty (laughs) <laughs> no, is his pleasure. Oh, did I write down right? That's why I, I treasure I, is my pleasure. That's like his old catchphrase. Oh, right, know. right, right. I wrote down. He says, yeah. Uh, and that Tom Arnold is Sydney's boss. And I liked Brittany under uh, in this. I thought she did, was really fun. Uh, I, yeah, she, she did a, a great of, job. She has a lot of charisma. And uh, I could see her being in a cop show like this. Uh, you know, like a Chicago PD or, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. I think she, she was, she was really good. I thought. And, uh, and so, yeah. And then we have these, like I said, these dual roles and uh, they had a, a lot of fun with it. Um, the, 
I don't know if the, the valet would the known has known him his whole life would, would mix him up, uh, especially being a prince. But, uh, but he even says that I can't believe that he, he didn't, uh, that they, that the prince even says, I can't believe that he didn't recognize me. Yeah. Like how did Grady not notice? <laughs> yes. Um, so I was a little bit confused about why they needed to steal the book. Like actually steal the book? Yeah. Well, they were just trying to get like higher up the food chain and they never saw someone up the food chain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that's why, because they were like, right now we're dealing with little fish. We're trying to get the big fish. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't know the big fish was that person all along. Oh, right. And so, (laughs) so they were trying to impress the mafia guys that, oh, you stole this book. Is that right? Well, so... Because there's the organized crime guys. Yes, there's the organized crime guys. And then they're trying to get their boss. So like the two guys that they, he has met with at the hotel, those two, mm-hmm. they are trying to get his boss. Because... So that's why they steal, like they they have an original Christmas carol. Yeah, so they, steal. They, they have, he, he, they want Patrick to steal the Christmas carol from these other people uh-huh. who are also shady crime people mm-hmm. so they want him to steal this from these crime people because he needs it for whatever reason and then once he does that then they're like and then you can meet our big boss so they're like okay we got to steal this to meet the big boss and patrick steals the prince's watch right yes, yes yes so then but then he has a tracking on his watch and so they're able to find where he is uh and uh so then the mafia holds up patrick and uh there's like there's then there's a whole note from patrick to meet the prince in the storage room they meet up and they agree to kind of help each other with this yeah Pat- patrick and prince gain an understanding and uh it's like you have to be better at being me (laughs) that's literally all they all say it's like uh, it's nothing (laughs) so then we get a dancing scene between the prince and sydney and uh, they're getting the chemistry is (laughs) getting stronger Mm -hmm. uh and the 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 so then the mafia guys they want him to they want patrick to pretend to be the prince and to steal the crown jewels the trinkets that we see earlier Mm -hmm. of jacovia did that make you laugh because you're always talking about the ovias (laughs) the what the ovias these fake countries that always oh no i i was so mad the minute that they came on the screen (laughs) honestly and i like okay dear hallmark producers or any movie producers ion producers people Uh in the world like let's for fun give the people of the fake country a french accent uh a german accent it is always british it's so funny yeah like let's just <laughs> let's just go for like a different part of the world yeah. let's just yeah. mix it up a little bit cuz like especially when we're considering all of these countries are allegedly like probably eastern europe yeah. anyway it's supposed Make to be like Slovakia or, yeah that's true it's true and so then the prince agrees to help out with this plan and uh and but then the book owners are really upset and they they threaten him and uh and then uh then Patrick has lunch with the prince's aunt and she she suspects him right immediately <laughs> yeah and she's like grady you're an idiot <laughs> she doesn't say that but like i feel like she should yes <laughs> the uh, she's like what was it that uh he um it was a food now i can think of it the, oh eggnog well he didn't the, like eggnog and he also didn't like the food mm-hmm. yeah so that's that's when she suspects him and she says where's the prince <laughs> ahead uh then uh then uh so then they have this little like fun banter 
He says, what if, uh, he says, what if I got a nice house in the country? And, uh, and then uh, I, and they say, I trust you. What, what do you say? We go catch the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It is fun. <laughs> uh, so they go to the gala. She looks beautiful. Uh, and so the bad guys basically think Patrick is stealing the crown jewels. And then she tricks the book people and then the mafia people. And uh, that's when I did write it down right here where he says, stealing treasure is my pleasure, Patrick. And, yeah. Uh, Patrick and the prince fight, uh, which was fun. And uh, and so then the, uh, and so then she has to, cause they had a kiss her and the prince earlier. And so she has to try to identify which one is which. So she kisses both of them. And so she's able to know, okay, this is the prince. Yeah, it's funny. It was cute. I enjoyed it. It was funny. And uh, she's made an FBI agent. She gets the promotion and uh, he's going to be king. And he invites her to join him for New Year's. Yeah. The thing is, I don't see a future for them because (laughs) I don't see her giving up being an FBI agent. And I don't see that working out for them long term, but otherwise it was great. Yeah. Well, she could be like basically the FBI equivalent in um Jacovia. Mm, I don't think she will. <laughs> but but yeah, this one was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed all of the leads. I thought they were excellent. And uh and I thought the guy did a good job playing both parts. Uh Jonathan Stoddard, he was he was really good. And I mean, Tom Arnold is barely in this movie. Yeah. Blank and you miss him. Yeah. Uh, so I would give this one a 3.5. Um, I think I'm actually going to give this one a 3.5 as well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at us go. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty fun. Like you said, the leads did a good job. Um, yeah. But I, since I sincerely enjoyed all four of these. I thought they were were a lot of fun and i would encourage ion to to like make this their niche keep doing it i think this is great a you got to find some way to stand out and not do the same things that everybody else is doing so why not do this great yeah yeah but this this is my pitch to ion let's do fun mysteries but like let's not try to make them so complicated it'll be (laughs) cceper because you don't have to pay as many actors Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and just like, you know, pare down the stories just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. maybe be willing to be silly. Yeah. I felt like they did lean into the camp on quite a few of these. Yeah, this I is what they I'm were, saying. Maybe, like, yeah. don't be, a, don't, don't, don't go this, the Hallmark route of trying to make everything sentimental. No, no. Mm. Let's just have some fun, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very good. If any of you listening, if you saw these movies, let us know what you think, which your favorites were, how many crowns you'd give them. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And Amber, where if, if people want to follow you on social media, uh, do you have anything you want to share? I mean, honestly, no. Because <laughs> I've been completely locked out of all of my social media. Oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> well, do you, you know what happened to me too. Out of my Facebook is just disabled and I can't get it back. Yeah. tried literally everything so, so i fail you i fail you on that so uh well, <laughs> nope <laughs> well you can follow me at rachel's reviews all over social media except for facebook and at least currently uh, and you can follow the podcast at homework's pod and homework's podcast all over social media and if you are listening on itunes please leave your ratings and reviews that really helps us a lot and if you are listening on youtube please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel we appreciate that so much we also have the patron group, which is a lot of fun. We're going to talk about these movies and we have monthly watch alongs and other activities. So please take a look at that. I definitely think it's worth your while. And then we have the merch store where you can get lots of fun Hallmark inspired merch and holiday inspired merch. Please take a look at that. And thanks so much. This is a lot of fun, Amber. And we'll talk to y'all later. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs>